Hi everyone. Thought you might want to see that. Okay, up we go. In to, well, we're going to head along that ridge there and then go directly into the forest. Pixie's there. Come on, Pixie. Hmm. Boy, what a sight. Let me back up and get this picture, okay? Branch going across that's framing. There we go. All right. We're almost, I'm sorry, I'm breathing hard again. This ridge is steep. So here's that ridge that we're going to go across along, I mean, and then we're going to head into the forest. One more look back. Isn't that something? Wow. Come on, Pixie. You're slowing us down. Okay, we're leaving the edge here, edge of the forest. There's a drinking fountain there, a drinking trough, especially for horses. And we're going to head up into the forest. Let's go. Come on, Pixie. Good girl. Up we go. This is a, another steep hill. And I'm holding the camera very level. I'm not tilting it in any way. So what you see is up, up, up. Come on, girl. All right. Let's climb this hill. We have one more hill <laughs> after that. It's a big one, too. This one's big, but we have an even bigger one down the path. And that one is long. This one is a little bit short. Okay, let's go. So we're almost to the top. It's right there. But I wanted to show you where we came from down there. And I wanted to show you here. Do you see how this child's shoe is hung on the tree very typical if you lose something here in switzerland and it's on the ground and someone sees it they'll hang it up right there usually no matter how valuable it is they'll just hang it up so when you come looking for it you'll find it where you dropped it okay let's get to this road up here That was a bit of a climb there. Up some more. This right here. Okay. Now we have a little bit of a down slope here. Pixie's still smelling. And, uh, you know, whenever you go down, you have to go back up. Whenever you go up, you have to come back down. And in a hill way back there, about, I don't know, maybe 3,000 steps. We came down, down, down. And now we're making our way up. But let's look at the forest, okay? It's very cloudy today. That's okay. That's okay. It's still beautiful. Now, because it's cloudy, colors don't pop. Bug keeps bothering me. Get out of here, bug. Colors don't pop. No, hardly any shadows only for really big things as you can tell when you look down the path hardly any shadows but that's all right that's all right let's keep going okay we've come to a fork in the road here a fork in the path and which way are we going to go the nice smooth straight way right there that's nice and low and doesn't have a hill or this one yeah, <laughs> you guessed it. Up we go, and this is a long one. It's in two stages. So, this first stage is pretty steep. And the second stage is even more steep. But, uh, we'll get there. Okay. Okay. Whew, I'm breathing hard on that one. 
So here's a little break for us. Here we, this one, this road goes down that way. But now we're looking at the second stage. Up, up, up. We just came from there. Let's go on up, Pixie. Come on. We can do it. We can do it. Up, up, up. And you guys, thank you for sticking with us today. This one might, might be a little bit boring if you don't like walking through forests. But I know that some of you do. Could you comment on that? What is your favorite trail? Maybe I'll look it up, you know? What is your favorite trail to walk? Is it a forest path? Is it in the middle of some fields? Is it a desert path? Mountain path? You know? What's the environment like on your favorite path to walk? Now, what if you don't like to hike and you prefer to do some other outdoor activity like biking or climbing or swimming? What is your favorite place to do those activities? Comment, okay? I'm kind of interested to find out. All right. We're in Switzerland, of course. And uh, here, just south of Zurich, and all over Switzerland, there are places to hike. Trails just like this one. So we have climbed up that hill. And I didn't take you with us all the way because it's just boring climb, but whew. it was kind of fun, but at the same time, because I know it's good for me and Pixie to, you know, exert yourself and go, go, go and try to be consistent with that. Every day we have these long, and I think we're close to 7,500 steps for each one of these walks. We try to do that at least once or twice a day, early in the morning, before work, before we go to school, and after. So I sit down and then she gets fed once a day. And about an hour after she's fed, five o'clock or so, we uh, go for a long walk. Okay, so I've talked us to another fork in the road. And yes, we're not lost. So we're going to, that goes to a neighborhood housing. So we're gonna stay in the forest and we're gonna go this way to the left. Okay, let's keep going. So I wanted to say a couple of things first. If you'd like to see some other hikes that Pixie and I have been on, just look up here to the right and you'll see either an I or you'll actually see a phrase up there that you can click on and see another video. Um, we also, I mean, I do. Pixie doesn't ride a bike, <laughs> but I do ride my bike through the forest and look up there again. Okay, now the second thing about these walks that Pixie and I do. Um, for me, I'm 61 years old. And last year I started um, treatment for prostate cancer. And um, I'm still on hormone therapy right now. But um, everything looks really good. I have my three month checkups and I'll start my six month checkups. And then after that, every year. Can't wait for that. But right now I'm on three month checkups. Or here they call them controls. Anyway, um, and it's easy, really easy for me to just sit in my chair or to give Pixie just a short walk and then get back home. Nice and cozy in a chair reading or 
watching YouTubes or doing something online or something like that. That's very easy for me. So to get up and to take these long walks, which are more beneficial to me than, than sitting in that chair, um, that's difficult. So I have to look at this path here. This is a running path. I want to show you this real fast. I know this is crazy, but here we have a running path that's next to the uh, normal path. And this is made out of sawdust. Pixie, you're not really allowed up there. And it goes, I'm not even long. I think it's, I don't even know. I can't even tell you how long this path is. It's a circuit, I'm sure. I've never been on it. Um, you're not allowed to ride your bike or take a dog on it. So I haven't been on that. But uh, that's just another amenity you uh, have here in uh, Switzerland when you go into the forest. Okay, so for me, I have to learn to talk to myself, to really talk to myself and say, get up and go. And that's, what, that's exactly what I say. Get up and go. Four words. And with that, I usually, oh, begrudgingly, get up and go. And I always, always enjoy, you know, these walks or rides out in nature. We have it here. Why not experience it? Why not use these paths instead of sitting at home? So maybe um, you have something that you do outside as well. Uh, I think I talked about this earlier in the video. Why don't you let us know what it is that is uh, something you enjoy doing, but it's outside, not inside. Quick story, quick story. Um, and then I think we'll let you go. But here's a quick story. So I have a twin brother. And uh, our house, we grew up in a village south of uh, Cleveland called Oakwood Village. Now, in Oakwood Village, that used to be the country. Like in the 40s when my parents moved out there, that was like way out from the city. But next to our house... We had a little forest that had a you know, little creek, a brook going through it, and we'd catch crayfish and uh, tadpoles and things like that. And we were always outside. Now, you understand, this is in the 70s and late 60s when we were children. And um, so this is before Internet. This is before VCRs. This is before any of that. And um, so we were always outside climbing trees, all those type of things. And the worst thing that you could hear when you're out in the woods is my mother calling, boys, come in, it's dinner time. And even though we were hungry and thirsty, that was, I'm telling you, that was tough. Wait a minute, let's go this way, Pixie. I'm getting, I'm talking, and I'm getting, uh, I'm t going down the wrong path, getting ready to. So anyway... So from that experience as a child, always being outside, always experiencing nature, I think that's carrying over to me in my later years here, 61 years old. So um, maybe you can add to what, some, what other people say about outdoor activities. That's the end of my story. That's the end of the video. If you'd like to subscribe, you can. If you'd like to press the like button or the bell button for notifications when I put up a new um, video, please do that too if you wish. More importantly, as you can tell in this video, I'm really asking you, asking you, and, and I keep asking, for you to comment. Comment on what you see, experience. What's your experience? What are your experiences that you'd like to share with us? My videos are not polished. They're not professional. Uh, they're not edited by someone um, else. I do everything. So please um, stick with me. Stick with the channel. Comment. All right, that's it. Pixie and I are gone. Bye-bye.